Hi, Andreas. I know you're not an economist, but could you explain in simple terms what a deflationary system is and how it relates to an inflationary system? What are the pros and cons? G, as not an economist, allow me to demonstrate. This is an inflationary system. And this is a deflationary system. And my producer is trying so hard not to crack up laughing here because that was completely ridiculous. But then again, it's not that much better than many of the explanation you get from mainstream economists. I mean, really, a lot of mainstream economics today is about blowing hot air like... <sighs> and so you don't get very good explanations. The bottom line here is that in an inflationary system, the total amount of money that is circulating in the economy is increased, sometimes increased dramatically, but continuously increased. As a result, if you think of money as a metric and you think of the global economy or whatever economy you're being uh, you're using in the context of that money as the total amount of actual value being transacted, then if you look at money as a metric, you simply divide the global economy by the amount of money that circulates and you get a fraction of that value corresponding to each unit of money. You take, for example, the $114 trillion US economy or whatever the number is right now, and then you divide that by whatever number of dollars are available, and you get a value uh, per dollar that corresponds to actual economic activity, whatever that number is. So you can imagine if you're increasing the divisor, if you're producing more money, then you're taking the same amount of economic activity and you're just dividing it into smaller and smaller pieces um, because you have more and more pieces. And that means that the amount of value that is reflected in each economic unit of currency goes down. You get to buy less with each dollar. It has less value because there's too many dollars uh, dividing the same amount of economic activity. Creating more dollars doesn't increase the economic activity. The economic activity is the same. Another way to describe this is take a pizza and if you cut it into eight slices, you have eight slices of pizza. If you're really hungry and cut it into 16 slices, now you have 16 slices of pizza, but you still have the same amount of food. Thank you, Hernan, for the helpful emoji demonstration of pizza slices. A disinflationary or deflationary currency, depending, is one in which the number of units does not increase or it increases very, very slowly so that the overall economic activity that it represents is either increasing faster or at the same pace, which means that you are not dividing by a greater and greater number. You're either dividing by the same number or the thing at the top of the fr fraction is going up as well as the thing at the bottom of the fraction. And as a result, the overall number remains the same. The ratio of economic activity to monetary units. A deflationary system is where the amount of units is actually decreasing. A disinflationary system is one where it is either not inflating as fast as the economic activity or it is deflating slowly against the economic activity. Of course, Bitcoin is a disinflationary system because there is inflation. New Bitcoin is being created. It's just being created at a rate of less than 2%. And as a result, that is usually less than the increase in the value of the economy of the Bitcoin space. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support me, please consider subscribing to my channel and supporting me on patreon.com.